This happened in 2001 on Halloween. Halloween night to be specific. I was seven. If you want to know my current age, you can do the math. It was freezing. Probably within the 20, 30 degree range. But I was hell-bent on going out anyways. I wanted my pillowcase to be stocked full of sweets, damn it. I was dressed as a cat. Not too hard to imagine that. Now, at the time, I had zero idea, but my rock star mom was on it, and you can thank her for her own par memory. My mom noticed a very tall man dressed in all black. Mom said he had black jeans on, a black trench coat, and a black hockey mask. He had no kids with him, so that was a huge red flag to my mom. But he did have a pumpkin basket to put candy in. He followed us around, house to house. Always stayed back three or four houses, according to my mom. After twenty or so minutes, she shrugged it off. I think he was just some tall kid innocently out trick-or-treating. But the more she said she kept shrugging it off, the more uneasy she felt. Now, I do remember my pillowcase was only half full and my mom was hurrying us home, me being super pouty about it. I do not, however, remember my mom putting the house on lockdown after we got in the front door, but she remembers she did it very quickly. I ate some candy, brushed my teeth, and got into bed. Bob laid down next to me, and I remember this and thought it was a little weird since I was sleeping on my own at seven. Now this is where my mom really helped me out with this story as I had no idea until we talked about it earlier. Fast forward to the morning. There was a pumpkin basket full of candy with a note on top that said meow and chicken scratch on the front porch right outside the front door. My mom threw out the candy in case it was tampered with and she burned up the note. Now what creeps me out, and I just found out from my mom earlier, is that in the middle of the night she got up from the bed to recheck the house, looked out the window, and saw him in our front lawn staring at the house with a pumpkin basket in his hand. She didn't think he noticed her. She called the police immediately. She briefed the officer on what happened, and the officer said he would do a few rounds and patrol the area. My mom never heard back from that officer that night. Or ever, she said. My mom also stayed up the entire night with a pistol in her lap after seeing him in the front yard. Since that night, and up until now, nothing weird with him has happened since. But as for his intentions, zero idea. When I was younger, we frequently visited my grandparents around holidays, even though we didn't live in the same town. My aunt lived two houses down from my grandparents, and the lady in the house between was kind of creepy. She was a large woman, over six feet. She wore logging chains around her neck, a dress, and work boots. Now, the only time I remember seeing her outside was either in her garden in the back or when she was washing the outside of her house, scrubbing the actual building. I did this often. During these times, she would yell at us kids and call us all kinds of things. She would tell us the devil would be coming for us. The adults told us to leave her alone and to avoid her. We would run the distance between my aunts and my grandparents because when you passed by, she was watching outside the windows. It was creepy, and we never went alone. One Halloween, one of my cousins dared us to trick-or-treat at her house. And I remember how scared I was. I didn't want to be a chicken. Plus, I was going with the group. One of us rang the doorbell, and there was a lot of banging noises in the house suddenly, like door slamming. And when she finally answered the door, she had a severed head in her hands and we all went screaming. The adults told us it was just a Halloween prop and 
You knew we shouldn't be bothering her and deserved to be scared. About a month later, my parents got a phone call that the lady had tried to kill my aunt while she was bringing in groceries and had my young cousin in her arms. The lady had one of them rope saws and had come up behind my aunt with it. She put it over her head and around her neck and proceeded to saw. My aunt naturally flipped and started kicking the door. My uncle came and beat the lady down with a fire poker. The police investigation revealed that the woman had been digging tunnels under her home which were coming up under my aunt's, my grandparents, and another neighbor's house. She had been bringing the dirt up and putting it in the raised beds of the garden. She also had a shrine of some sort of underground which had a few severed heads around it. My aunt survived, by the way, but has a long scar across her neck. It was my turn to take my kids trick-or-treating. The previous year was my wife's, and we trade back and forth every year. My son and daughter are age seven and nine, Usually I stay on the street while my kids go up to different houses to collect candy. After about half an hour of walking around, we came to one of the more popular hot spots for candy collecting. A main street in the neighborhood. Lots of really cool decorations and animatronics on people's lawns. So I became a bit distracted and stopped watching my kids closely. At one point they came back from a house accompanied by another girl. About the same height as my daughter. She was wearing a weird homemade mask, like a cardboard cutout or something. My daughter asked me if she could trick or treat with us, and so I said sure. And we carried on together as a group. I didn't know who this girl was, but I figured she was a friend from school. As we continued, I started to notice a large man trailing us. He was wearing some sort of angry cat mask. It was kind of creepy, to be honest. I thought that maybe he was the father of the girl, so I tried to start up some small chat with him. I said something like, nice weather, eh? But he didn't respond. He just stood there staring at me while our kids went up the stairs to the next house. I tried again, asking, hey, is that your daughter? He nodded, but didn't say anything. I figured he just wasn't in the mood for chatting, so I stopped trying. We carried on about another 15 minutes, until suddenly my kids came up to me and said they wanted to go home. This surprised me as we hadn't been out for too long and their bags were only about a third full. In any case, I agreed, waved by at the man in the cat mask and his daughter, and started on our way home. The weird thing is that when I glanced back, the man and his daughter were just standing there, staring at us. I checked one more time as we turned the corner and they were just still standing there, not having moved at all. At this point, I decided to ask my kids, so who was that girl? My daughter looked up at me with a confused look on her face. She's your friend, my daughter replied. I asked her what she meant, and apparently the girl with the cardboard mask approached them and said she was a friend of mine. She told my daughter she was too shy to ask me to join us for trick-or-treating, and wanted my daughter to ask me instead. I laughed at this story and replied to my daughter, Why would you think she was my friend? I don't have any children friends. What my daughter said next chilled my bones. According to her, when the girl with the cardboard mask approached them for the first time, she wasn't wearing a mask, so they were able to see her face. As it turns out, she wasn't a girl at all, but an older woman around my age with wrinkles on her face. What's even more disturbing, the old woman just started to steal treats from my daughter's bag, apparently when I wasn't looking. This is why she asked me to go home. The old woman was creeping them out and they just wanted to get away from her. I brought my kids home and I told my wife what happened. 
We made sure to check through all the candy, but didn't find anything suspicious or off. We didn't call the police or anything, since nothing really happened. Thinking back, I kind of regret that decision now. What the heck was that old woman doing, and who the hell was that man following us around? I don't think I'll ever know. I just think it's sick that there are people out there on Halloween hiding behind masks pretending to be children.